morning, I'm Ed Wright, CEO of Wright Manufacturing, and today we're going to do a breakdown on our ZXL Rider. We're going to take all the guards off and get underneath the shields and show you exactly what the machine's made of. But before we do that, let me um, sort of place this product in our lineup. So the ZXL stands for the Extra Large Z. We also have the ZXT, which is the Extreme Size Rider, and both machines are very similar. The front of the machine looks almost identical, but when you get to the back of the machine, the differences are that the ZXT has a 26 inch tire. That's about 14 inches wide. This has the 24 by 12 inch tire on the 61 inch deck. If you go to the 52 inch deck, the tire gets just a little bit more narrow in order to get, create the trim edge. But the difference between the ZXL and ZXT, it's the drivetrain and a bunch of low maintenance features, more low maintenance features on the ZXT. So we got the bigger tire, the ZXT has a pump and motor system, allows the engine to sit lower in the machine. It has oil guard and an extended 1,000 hour hydro oil change interval system in it. So that machine is great. If you've got a lot of property like this, 10 acres at a go, you get real high performance. The, uh, the whole seat on that machine, the seat tray travels up and down. But if you're moving from property to property about every 20 minutes or so, this machine is actually going to be a higher performer. Just because it's about 250 pounds lighter, it's more nimble. And if you compare the engines between the two machines, if, there, if you've got a 37 horsepower mower an engine on the ZXL and the 40 horse on the ZXT, when either of those engines are under full load, they produce about the same power. The engines available on this machine right now are the Kawasaki FX850 carbureted engine, very solid tried and true engine, good power. If you want a ton of power, we have the um, Vanguard 37 horsepower EFI engine. We also have the Vanguard 28 horsepower uh, EFI engine, which is a real efficient engine and produces a lot of power as well. So let's take the guards off and break down how the machine is constructed. All right, so now we've got the covers off of the machine and we're just gonna go front to back and go over all the components. So first off here, we have the caster housings. These caster housings are huge compared to our industry standard. And the reason we do that is that it's easy to break this pin off if you're going up curbs all day long. And um, the caster pin here is much, much larger. Now we use this plastic cap here because if the housing were to get smashed, this continues to seal um, the fit in here. And what's important with casters is to keep the water out. If you can keep the water out of this, you really don't have to keep greasing it. Um, the other thing is if you have a tight fitting metal cap here and you pump this with grease, you blow the seal out the bottom, whereas this cap here will allow the pressure to relieve or at least the cap would pop out before the seal being popped out. This grease port here, <clears throat> we don't put a regular grease fitting on there because um, it's too easy to pump grease in there and blow the um, seal out or the top cap off. And it's also something that only really needs to be addressed if there's grease leaking out of the bottom. Otherwise, you can just keep it plugged. That bolt is a special threaded bolt to match the thread pitch of a grease fitting. The caster yoke itself has reinforcing fins underneath of them, two of them. That gives us a lot of strength on the pin attachment and stiffness in the yoke. We run the Carlisle 13 by 650 tire on this machine. And like many of our mowers, we have a debris guard on here. This keeps grass and twine from getting wrapped around it and damaging the bearing. We have a deep row uh, bearing in here. It's like a harrow bearing um, <coughs> with a good seal on it. On this side, we have the carriage bolt because when you're going around um, you know, fence or house or something, this doesn't snag on that trim side. The other thing that we do in a lot of our machines here is you can see the frame has a real thick plate on it. Some of our frames actually have thicker tube on this side than on this side. But what we want to do is this side of the frame should not be as strong as this side. That way, if you were to run into something really hard with this or get it damaged, we, we want to see this as the fusible link and have no damage to the frame. Uh, the other thing you'll notice with our casters is that they're typically always swept a little bit to the right side of the machine. That does a few things. One is it gives you a better turn radius in here when you get into a corner. Um, this wheel's not interfering with how much you can, how close you can get to something. The other thing is that the cut quality is actually better if the wheels are shifted a little bit over to the discharge side of the deck. Now shifting over to the deck, we use these watermelon shaped wheels. These wheels have uh, real low ground pressure, whereas the rounder wheels will kind of rut into the ground. They're adjustable and they're double captured, which um, creates a lot of strength. 
again, these brackets are made here where this would cave in if you were to hit a tree stump or something before bending the deck. <clears throat> now the air core deck, it's notched in like this, allows us to make the machine shorter and more maneuverable. And the baffle in the deck has kind of a shape that follows that anyways. So it really isn't about the um, cut performance as it is about the space. The other thing is the nose of our deck has an angled lip here. And so if you were to hit an edge, this would glaze over it rather than a blunt impact. Uh, this machine, actually nowadays all of our machines, they don't have through bolts on them. There's a bolt that goes in the bottom of the spindle shaft. And all of our heavy duty machines use these taper lock hubs, which creates a, a really strong fit up of the pulley on the shaft. Um, the other thing is all of our pulleys are about one inch bigger than industry standard. And what that does for us, gets more torque to the blades. It also helps the belt last significantly longer. We do a number of things to um, increase the belt life of our machines. One is that we use a special material um, rubber here that handles much higher temperatures. We also have a very particular cord construction in our belt where the, the Kevlar cords are actually um, not at their standard height in here and it gives us more durability. And then we have a cloth on the bottom of the V which again helps extend the life of the belt. Now, most of our idlers use it, this um, die spring here. The idler, all the inertia is near the middle so this idler can respond very quickly. It's mounted on ball bearings. And the problem with extension springs is the hooks break off of them. So we use a compression string he spring here, which is much, much more reliable. Now this idler pulley and the one there on the other side as well, they both have double uh, row ball bearings in them. And that means if there's a slight offset load on this pulley, like there is on many riders, this deck is all the way down, um, the pulley lasts much, much longer in some cases two to three times longer. And this pulley here, on this machine here, we use the same six inch backside pulley on the hydro drive, which is huge. Now, the reason that we have two, two belt drives, we've got one that comes around this side, this is the tension run. This idler pulley is on the slack side. Now, if we move over here, you have the same thing. Belt runs in this direction. The engine load is on this run right here. And so this idler is just on the slack side. This machine has no tight side idler pulleys, which is really bad for the belt. The belt's getting stressed under load when you go around a backside idler. Many companies, they have one belt that goes to the engine that's like 150 inches long. That belt's very expensive and it sees a ton of fatigue on it. And this setup is far superior. The deck attachment here, the push arms have a, a ball joint on them like you'd have on the three point lift of a tractor. It's very heavy duty as well. And you might notice here, if you're familiar with rights, many of our decks have a tapered on the back, taper on the back of the deck. And what that does is when the air circulates, it creates a vacuum as the air rises here. This deck here, this machine is got a lot more power. It can be used in thicker grass. And so this has what we call the flat back deck on it. Um, that's a number of our machines, which gives, just gives you a little more versatility in different conditions. Now the deck lift system here, it's hanging on chains, and this is our adjuster here, so you get a half inch uh, ratchet or breaker bar, and you put it in there, loosen this nut, adjust that cam to the height you want, and clamp this back in. Like many of our machines, we have no grease fittings, and that requires some unique te techniques. So, for example, here on this, we have a stainless steel shaft that goes into a synthetic bushing on the deck lift, and those are really good for that continuous small mo movement and they don't require lubrication. So that's just one of those many features that we have on the mower that doesn't require greasing. This machine kind of has a motocross theme here with the grippers here, the grippers here, same on the, on the foot pedal and on the deck lift pedal. Let's talk about the deck lift system here real briefly. The deck is all the way down right now, which is why the pedal is so far back. It's kind of sitting on the ground. But the way this works, is when you push the pedal forwards, this latch hooks on here. And with your foot, you can push with your heel to unlatch it. A lot of deck lift systems, you have to use your hands in order to release the deck. And we think that's just not, um, not good. It's not as productive as being able to have just about everything hands-free. Now the height selector itself, we laser cut in all the numbers because if you blow the label off with a pressure washer, um, you can still see the numbers. And we do a lot of that 
nowadays. So for example, this placard here, it's steel. Logo's cut in there. Some other things like this bumper here, it's black bumper. When you pack all the mowers in a trailer and the stuff gets all scratched up, if that's just um, orange colored panel, it'll get dented and scratched. But if we use tubular steel, this machine will still look great after 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 hours. As much as possible, we want all this stuff to be extremely um, durable. Here's your service parts, cheat sheet. The foot panel comes off so you have easy access inside there. Our parking brake is the foot activated, so you push the top of the pedal to apply the brake. And to release the brake, you push this bottom portion, which unhooks the, the latch. So that's the, uh, the operator area. So now let's look at the seat for a second. This seat here is one of the most premium seats on the market. It has the most range of suspension. It has the seat back adjuster. Very few people actually have the adjustable reclining back. And the reason we do that, you can see here, the frame is level to ground, but this seat tray leans back about five degrees. That's a trick that we use to make the machine that much more comfortable. As you're bouncing along, you don't wanna be sliding towards the front of your seat. You wanna be kind of sitting in that pocket comfortably. And in order to do that, we have to have the adjustable backrest. Our armrests have the padded armrest, and there's also an adjuster here that you can use to adjust the armrests to match the height of your control levers. Now the control levers, they do have a lot of range in them. So you can see here, we're in the upper hole and you can drop it down to the lower hole if you wanna lower it down. And you can see here the adjustable teeth that lets you move the handle as far forwards or far back as you want with this quick adjust. Now in the operator station, we have two pockets here just for convenience. They're not for anything real particular, but you run into stuff that uh, you can't keep in your pockets or you pick up off the ground and you want to put in there. And this little lip here keeps it from getting jostled out of the, um, of the pocket. Our steering dampers have two stages of damping. So you can see here, this is in the lower hole, which is more damping. You can put it in the upper hole, which is less damping. And then our linkages themselves, we use heavy duty rod ends, if you can see down in there, uh, that goes straight down to the transmission. Now the instrument panel here, this is a carbureted engine. So we have um, two levers. In EFI, we just have the throttle lever. This is the Kawasaki carbureted engine on this one here. This is all on the right hand side, so it's not less likely to be hit by tree limbs and that kind of thing. For those of you who are familiar with our brand for a long time, this machine actually has a newer style key for a little better uh, durability and security. We have here a 12 volt charge port, the hour meter. Also, if you've been, uh, if you're familiar with rights for many years, we used to have a reset button on there and a bunch of menus. And it was kind of confusing to use. And so we now just are simply counting hours. The other thing is that with oil guard, non oil guard and Kawasaki and Vanguard having different oil change intervals, it all became um, not possible to have that in a common hour meter. This little knockout here is for the light kit. We offer an LED light kit that includes a harness and it goes on there. The fuel capacity here, we've got two tanks, 15 and a half gallons, and the tank is functional. Our design philosophy is stuff has to always function first and then aesthetic second. And so this tank, it's cut down here for the sight line when you're sitting in the seat. The angles here deflect things like tree branches. This is slightly angled, so if you spill some gas, it comes forwards and not back behind the machine. And this here acts like a mud flap. So if you're mowing the rain or mud's flying off the tires, less of it will go flying up uh, against your head. And then here, our rear bumper joins in to the tank. We call this the Tesla truck um, aesthetic. And so that means that this part of the machine doesn't snag. And all this is high enough where if you bring another mower and park it in here, it doesn't interfere with that guard. All right, so let's get back to underneath here. This machine has the Hydro Gear 4400 transmissions, which are very responsive, 
very reliable transmissions. And actually the 4400s can outperform the 5400s if the machine's weight is um, not too heavy. And so 5400 is not always a better transmission. You could compare this machine to a number of mowers with 5400 transmissions to them around the same weight and these transmissions would actually outlast that because the 5400 tends to run a little bit hotter. It's capable of more torque, but it generally runs a little hotter and the 4400s generally run a little cooler, which is the advantage there. The other thing that we have here that's uncommon, most people would put one little reservoir that feeds both tanks and no vent line. We have separate left and right tanks that are the bigger size and we have a vent line. So what's important about the vent line, you see this little vent line right here? When you drain the oil out of the transmission and you pour oil in this, that hose that goes down the tank, the oil can't go down the hose at the same time the air comes up. Or if, if you do, it takes like a half an hour to do each transmission um, oil change. <clears throat> but when you have this vent line here, it lets the air come up from the transmission, top of the transmission, while this fills a lower, the, the port on the bottom fills a lower port on the transmission just makes everything so much easier. But, um, and you know, it costs just a tiny bit more, but we're not in the business of trying to make the cheapest mower possible. We're in the business of trying to make the best mowers possible. Battery here is centrally located. We like to keep all of our weight in the center of the machine so it turns easier. Um, and the other thing you'll notice here is that this newer machine, our battery tap for the harness comes right off the battery side. Traditionally, they came off the starter there. This is just easier to get to and it's actually a little bit more reliable to use this method. Again, we've got some little cheat sheets in here in terms of the belt path, fuel flow. Um, I forgot to mention this as well. I don't like it when some of these controls are all floppy and weak. So what we did here, this hinge is real wide and strong. We have a real strong over-centering spring. And so your controls snap in in the in position and it's all real thick material. Come around again to the gas station, gas uh, tank. We've got the cup holder. This gauge here, what's interesting about it is it's actually a compass. Um, if you hold on a second, I'll pop it off and show you exactly what's going on. See this? It's got a magnet in it. And so there's no gas that can get in here. And in here, there's another magnet. And so the dial is communicated magnetically. And so there's, um, it's just a lot more reliable type fuel gauge system. All right, coming around here, we've got the 24 by 12 tire. We run five lugs on all of our 24 and larger inch tires these days. Um, if you were to get this machine in the um, 52 inch deck, it comes in 52 or 61, if you get a 52 de inch deck, you'd get a uh, nine and a half inch wide tire. Um, something else I realized I forgot, we put a fan guard over the transmissions. And the reason for that is most machines, there's an electrical switch when you fold this up that blocks you from starting the engine when the seat's up. But that's a, a pain because sometimes you need to start up the transmissions to purge the oil or you're doing uh, maintenance in the shop with it. So by putting guards over the transmissions, we eliminate the need for that switch. So it eliminates one thing that can fail electrically and um, it allows it to be easier to work on the machine. Um, I also missed the fuse box. So all the fuses are in a sealed box here. All of our, most all of our machines run on only one relay. And that again, significantly increases the reliability of the machine. <clears throat> Coming around the back, you can see here We've got the heavy bump, bumper I mentioned before and the anchor points. They're out of the way, but easy to get to. We've got the hitch receiver here. Um, you know, it's, it's not like we made it for any one particular thing. It's a convenience. And you'll find that once it's there, uh, it's really handy when you do need it. The, the bumper here is designed to line up with the front frame. So if you're packing machines in here, everything fits up nice and tight. Now, a lot of our machines, we strive to make them as low maintenance as possible, kind of things where you can just set it and forget it. And so this here is one of those features. Most mowers, they would have the engine deck go all the way over here to the frame, and this would become a rat's nest of debris. But what we've done here is we've created a pass-through, and that pass-through means that very rarely do we get much de debris accumulation 
down in that area. And so we've reinforced the frame with some of these heavy bars and this bumper is actually part, becomes part of the structure of the machine. Now here you can see the uh, muffler guard keeps the heat off the grass. We have the bypass air coming off the engine, which is part of cooling the muffler as well. Let's go underneath here and look at the drive lines. <coughs> All right, so let's look at the drive line underneath here. Um, we've got a couple things going on. Here is our drive pulley for the transmissions going over there to the top of the 3400 transmissions. And then we've got the clutch here that goes down to the deck. Many of our clutches have the highest quality bearings and uh, high tech grease in them, which helps the clutch last a lot longer. We also uh, use a much bigger pulley. Oftentimes these pulleys are as big as the housing. The bigger pulley, again, reduces the stress on the belt. Now our pump belt itself, it's constructed from high temperature rubber and it's something we call a 5L section belt. In other words, the cross section, the depth of the belt from the view here is like an A belt, but the width of it in this direction is like a B belt. Here you can see the oil drain. It's conveniently located right there where it passes through. So it's very easy to just put oil, slide an oil pan under here and drain the oil without it making contact with anything else. Our clutch bracket, oftentimes clutch brackets are um, in the way of the belt, but here it's positioned where you can change the belt without having to remove the clutch stop. Earlier I mentioned that we ran that really large double bearing idler pulley on the pump drive, and you can see it there. It significantly helps the life of the machine. Um, a lot of mower companies <coughs> cheap out on the bottom of the frame here, <coughs> which, which allows the transmissions to be vulnerable to being hit by rocks and that kind of thing. And what we've done here is we have heavy bars both here and in the front that are lower than the transmission and a guard that helps protect the transmissions from damage. But it doesn't block you from having to get in there and do maintenance. It's not in your way. Um, more so from a dealer standpoint, the way the transmission is mounted, the frame is in a C shape here and the transmission can drop right out the bottom of the machine without having to snake the axle out, which is pretty convenient and reduces repair times. You can see the spring there on the parking brake, Paul. We like to use springs for that type of thing because it doesn't require continuous adjustment. It just works for the rest of the life of the machine. Now in terms of other options and things that you can fit up on the machine, we have an anchor point here and these bolts in here are where the bagger system mounts. So you can get a three bag unit on this machine that hangs right off the back. Once you have the backing plate installed, one person can easily take the bagger on and off with two pins that lock it in. Right now we have the ROPS folded down and you can see that it's just about the length of the machine. So it's not in your way. If you do need to fold it down, we like to keep the corner post just short of your shoulders. And the, bag, the blower system, the way that works, we've got some other videos if you want to look at that in more detail. We take what would be the double pulley in the center and we put it on the side. Most people, they put a little tiny pulley on there they can't transmit the full torque of the engine to the blower. We use the full size belt and our belt stays flat as it goes into the blower. And the blower spins in this direction. So we preserve the momentum of the grass coming out of the blower and up into the tube. Our blower was designed to handle up to a 40 horsepower engine. And a lot of blowers today were only really made to handle uh, mid 20 horsepower engines, which makes a big difference when you're looking to bag. So that's overall the ZXL. It's a very capable machine. It's very nimble. Um, our ZXT, the bigger machine, is actually more popular, but in some cases it's overkill. Um, whereas this machine, like I said, ZXL is a very nimble machine, especially with the 37 horsepower engine. So that's a breakdown on this mower. If you've got any questions, just let us know. We'd be glad to answer.